CC. Um, today you're gonna work with me on this fun little desk. It is, um, it's, I'm not sure exactly how old it is, um, and I can't remember exactly what these kind of desks are called, but it's really neat. It, it has this part that flips up and opens to the writing area. Um, it used to have a piece that would hang down here and kind of close this gap, but that piece is missing. So we're just gonna pretty it up and make it look like it, um, it was never there. And the inside is really cool. It has got these um, like little um, cubbies for like papers and letters, envelopes, what have you. And then this, I have it taped right now, but this little writing area pulls out to make a larger writing area. So it's, it's a fun little desk. I, I like these kind, they don't take up too much space. So um, they're fun to make pretty and we're gonna put a pretty chair with it and, and uh, make it a, a little set. Um, I'm thinking that, um, I've, well, okay, so I've already gotten, I scuff sanded it. I'm thinking that I'm gonna leave the legs um, natural or maybe just go over them with some salve or um, some some gloss sealer. I haven't quite decided that yet, but um, so I went ahead and I scuff sanded the top portion and I put a, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna color block half in this um, Peacock by Dixie Belle. It's, it's such a pretty color. I've got one coat on now and I've got another coat to go. And then I'm going to make a custom blended color of uh, a custom mix of barn red and flamingo. I'm gonna do 50% flamingo and 50% barn red to paint the other side. And I've used my tape so I can get a crisp line and so that I know exactly you know how far to bring it down on this side. I'm continuing that pattern or that design down onto the front. And then around the bottom skirt of this whole piece, I'm going to do um, some stripes with, uh, this is Dixie Bell cotton, and then I have a color that is called Midnight Sky. It's basically a black with a bluish, a little bit of a navy blue tint to it. It's, it's a pretty color, so um, I am going to do that, this, and continue it all the way around to the other side. So I've got uh, a coat down of the, um, of the peacock. I've got two coats of my white cotton. And I think just for good measure, I'm gonna go ahead and do a third coat of the white cotton. I don't, I don't really think I need it, but um, there's a couple spots where it wouldn't hurt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And, um, and then after that's dry, then I'll move on to my custom, um, custom mix coral color on this side. Okay, so before, um, before I move on and do the other, the paint the other side of the top of my desk in the custom coral color, I'm gonna go ahead and do a large stencil on the part that I painted peacock, which is now dry. I just wanna add some, some texture and interest to that. So, so I decided to add a large stencil and I'm gonna make it in a um, color that is, I'm gonna use peacock as the base and I'm gonna add just a little bit of um, Midnight Sky to make it a little bit darker. I don't want the stencil to be too contrasty. I want it to be in the same color family. So, um, so I'm using my Peacock, just a dab of Midnight Sky, and I will use that on my stencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up. And I'm not measuring it because I, whoop, whoa, I'm not measuring it. I'm just gonna make enough um, to make sure I can cover my stencil. And if I have some left, then cool, I can use it for another project. 
I love this peacock color. Oh my god. I, it, do, it doesn't even show up right in the video. It looks kind of blue in the video, but it's more of like a really like deep turquoise. So pretty. Okay, and then you'll see actually with the midnight sky, I'm not going to pour it. I'm just going to grab a little dab with my mixer and put it in there because that's how little I need to add. So, let's see. I'm just going to grab a little bit with my little thing here. Add some, maybe just a tiny bit more. Just a little. I don't want it to be too much darker than the actual color, just a little bit. Um, the stencil that I'm going to be using is a large, it's called a 3D stencil. It's from Redesign with Prima. Um, you can use these stencils. Look how big they are. I want to say it's like almost two feet by almost three feet, almost two by three. But these are really good for walls, furniture. Um, the, the only thing I hate about stenciling is having to repeat the pattern a million times. So if you're doing something like a large surface area, um, it's kind of a pain to do a, use a small stencil. So these are amazing. They're great. And they're super thick. So um, uh, you can use, use them with like the 3D paste to make 3D stencils. And... Um, they're, they're just nice and thick, really high quality, and you can just hose them down when you're done. So you can reuse them a million times. I went ahead and I, I already sprayed the back with my stencil adhesive because I don't stencil without stencil adhesive. I've learned, learned my lesson and that's just one of my little um, tricks to stenciling um, that makes it bearable, to be honest, because we all know stenciling can be, it can be daunting. You know, like you don't want to spend all your time um, working on a piece, you know, and then go to stencil it and, and you ruin it and have to repaint it. So I, yeah, the stencil adhesive helps a lot. It's a spray. I spray the back and it creates this, I let it dry for about five to ten minutes and it creates a tacky surface so that it grabs to the surface of um, what you're stenciling. So, <laughs> so I've already done that. I've already added the adhesive. And okay, so somehow I'm going to show you. Okay. So you can see my stencil is pretty big. It's, it's gonna cover the whole surface area that I want to stencil, which is the peacock side of the desk. So I'm gonna, <coughs> excuse me, center that as best I can where I want it. Give it a firm press down. Get that adhesive to stick. And then when I stencil, I use a foam roller. 99% of the time, I don't like to use a brush because um, it, I just feel like if you have too much paint, it seeps underneath the stencil. And um, if you stipple it you have to do a couple coats and it takes forever so i i prefer to just use a foam roller these are cheap you can get them at the craft store for a couple bucks and i found that to be the best way to to stencil without having the seepage underneath so i'm going to take my custom um tint of peacock 
peacock with a, a little bit of um, midnight sky. It's a little bit, just a little bit darker than the color I have already painted on there, which is what I wanted. Um, make sure it's mixed up real good. Okay, and then I use a little tray for my foam roller, so just pour some in your tray. I want to load up my roller, but I don't want to load it up too heavy because when I press it down, it'll push that paint under the edges. So I want to load up the whole thing, but then um, squeeze off a little bit of the excess so that um, so that I don't have too much on there. So load it up, and then I just get rid of the excess on this little side guy here. <clears throat> And these, these 3D stencils um, from Redesign with Prima are awesome, but they're a little thick since they are made for like 3D, making 3D stencils. Um, they're a little thick, so you just have to make sure that you're getting down in there, down in the details um, with your foam roller or if you're using a brush or whatever. Just make sure you get down in the details because I've done some where I just kind of went over it like I normally would and um, I lifted it up and I didn't have some of the detail that I wanted. So when you're using these really thick stencils, especially these 3D stencils, um, just make sure you're getting down in the detail there. excited about this desk you guys it's gonna be so cool it's gonna be colorful and sparkly and pretty and bold and fun it's gonna have a little bit of everything going on it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do with this desk because I, I was thinking <coughs> it's been a while since I did something neutral you know like everyone friendly it's been a while and there's some pretty fun classy things that I I could do but then I was like you know I'm just gonna go bold and funky because that's what I like to do and that's what I'm in the mood for so why not okay so getting there Oh my gosh, I just realized my washer and dryer are running. Can you hear that? My, whoops. Oh well. Okay. I'm getting there and then I'm trying to decide if I want to do a second coat. I don't I don't really think it's necessary. Um it looks like it's covering pretty good where I'm getting down in there. I want it to be fairly subtle, so um, just get it all covered and then I'll probably just maybe go over it one more time just for good measure. All about the good measure. Okay, so I'm gonna just run over it one more time real quick. I love, love, love these large stencils. I gotta get my hands on some more of these bad boys. There's one that's um, scripted words. That one's really fun. There's a 
This one is called Diamond Grunge, and I love it. Um, Imperial Damask is another one that's my favorite. And there's one called Garden Dreams that's got some florals, but it's got some little swirls in it too, but they're really fun. Okay, so there's that. I got a little bit of my paint left over, not much. Did pretty good on the amount there. <clears throat> um, okay, so I'm gonna pull my stencil up carefully and hope for the best, right? Every time I pull up a stencil, it's like, my, I stop breathing for a second, like, oh my gosh. Voila, okay, so, somehow I got a little bit white paint right there somehow, but other than that, I think it looks pretty good. I don't know where that white, white dot is. Okay, so, so I wanted to add a little bit of texture and that is exactly what I've done here with this stencil. Um, so I'm gonna let it dry and then move on to the other, the other side with my custom um, coral color. But first I'm gonna go ahead and start taping off my, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start taping off my stripes. So for this piece, since there's so many stripes, I'm gonna use one and a half inch painter's tape. Um, usually if it's a small area, I use one inch, but when it's a large area, I, I like to use the larger stripes. So I use the blue clean release tape by Duck. Um, I found that it seems to work the best for me. It doesn't pull up, <coughs> it pulls up less, it doesn't pull up paint like some other tapes. Um, knock on wood, at least it hasn't. I've had good luck with it not pulling up paint. Um, I haven't had much seepage underneath, so I get good, clean, crisp um, lines. But I'm gonna go ahead and start on the side. And I, I eyeball my stripes. So if you've seen any of my videos where I stripe before, people are always like, oh my gosh, you're crazy. And I'm like, I just eyeball it. Um, my stripes are rarely perfect, but they're not supposed to look that way because I usually end up putting them on so that they look kind of grungy or distressed or imperfect. And then once, once I'm all done, people kind of kind of get it, what I'm going for. But that's why I don't measure them. If you want absolutely perfect stripes, you're more than welcome to take a, a measure, uh, a ruler or measuring tape and mark off every inch and a half so you know where to put your tapes. Or you can attach your tape one right after the other next to each other and then pull up every other one if you want ex uh, exactly one and a half inch stripes. But I am just gonna eyeball it. And then um, when you when you put down your tape, make sure you um, just burnish the edges with your fingers to help avoid some of that um, paint seepage underneath. smash your finger in your furniture.
Almost done with one side. I'm gonna finish this side and paint it, and then um, then I'll move on to the rest of the other two sides. So you'll see that um, my my corner here is a little bit shorter. If that makes sense, my last little strip is shorter than these other stripes. So when I continue on to the other side, I'm just going to, um, instead of starting over again with tape and having one little tiny, tiny corner strip, I'm going to count, account for that part of the strip on the other side so it doesn't look like the one stripe is coming around the side, if that makes sense. See what I mean? So I made that one corner, one stripe that kind of cuts off on the two sides. Just to make it a little more visually appealing than having one little tiny, tiny stripe. Tiny stripe piece. So I'm using um, Midnight Sky from Dixie Belle to do my stripes. It's a black with just a little bit of a navy tint. <laughs> Normally, normally for stripes, I use a foam roller just like I did on the stencil. But um, since I've got these like hard, I've got this hard lip right here, I want to get up underneath. I don't, I, I, I can't really do that with a foam roller without getting black on this top part. So I'm just going to use a, um, a flat brush, a flat one inch brush. Um, and I'm going to go in the direction of the tape. That way, because if you go in the opposite direction, it just increases your chances of squishing that um, that paint underneath the tape and getting a, a non-crisp line. So, so I'm going to go ahead and put one coat on of the Midnight Sky in the same direction as the stripes. might need two coats. I'm not really sure yet. I'm going to see how this goes. It's almost more of like a charcoal with a hint of navy rather than black. I don't know, it's kind of hard, hard to tell. Like a grayish, navyish, blackish to me, but I don't know. Everyone might see something a little different. And also I'm going to be distressing this piece so once I get all my paint on all my paint down and dry and um, all that I'm just going to take my sander and distress it um, I don't know not super heavy but maybe the medium distress if that makes sense not super light but I definitely want it to look um, want it to look a little beat up 
So I, th I think I can get away with one coat of the Midnight Sky Stripes. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think I can get away with, away with one coat. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my stripes. And let those dry. I'll go ahead and pull up a couple pieces of tape so you can see, or so we can see that hopefully they are crisp black white lines. So far, so good. Cool. Yeah, can you see how? Um, how crisp they turned out. I feel relieved. <laughs> Every time I stripe or stencil, I'm like relieved once it turns out the way I want it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue all the way around this thing. And um, then I'm gonna mix up my custom coral and paint the top. Okay, so I'm ready to paint the other half of my um, my desk here, and like I said, I'm gonna make a custom mix of um, a custom mix like coral color, but I'm gonna go ahead and tape it off first, real quick. Well, that's empty. Okay, so I'm gonna tape it off so I have a nice crisp line, and. You can see I'm really just needing to tape the top down um, down to the underneath the lip of the top. And I when I put my tape down when I'm doing colors right up next to each other, I overlap just a little bit, like a sixteenth of an inch, um, instead of trying to get it like a perfect perfectly butted up the color the, the colors perfectly butt up next to each other I oh, I'm gonna overlap my um, my coral just about a sixteenth of an inch over the the teal and then I got it down here and um, tape off this little lip here too then I should be good to go Hopefully that doesn't pull up any paint because that would make me sad. Cool. Okay, so like I said, um, I'm going to be doing about 50% um, 50 Flamingo from Dixie Belle and 50% um, Barn Red from Dixie Belle. I'm, I'm going to start out with 50-50 and see how I like that color and I can adjust depending on what I, kind of what I think. brand new paint jars. I feel like I'm wasting paint because it's all over the top. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm not measuring it. I'm gonna eyeball about 50-50. Really need to get paint pours. Well, that, that, that was a mess. Don't try this at home. Okay, try it at home, just be more careful. I need to get some spouts. After I just said I hate wasting paint. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna try it like this. And there we go. That works better. Okay, build up my flamingo. Clean up my mess. That really irks my nerves. Okay, and then I want about another 50% um, of the barn red. So that's pretty much, I wanted just like a coral, maybe a little bit more on the red side because of the transfer that I'm gonna use, has some red flowers with a touch of orangish coral. And that is what I was going for. I wanted like a nice rosy coral, which is exactly what I'm getting. So that's awesome. I don't think I'm gonna adjust it anymore. I think I'm just gonna leave it at the 50-50 flamingo and barn red. Perfect. Check that out. Oh my gosh, that color is so pretty. So pretty. I don't know if you can even see it with the light shining on it, but isn't that so pretty? Yes, it's so pretty. So, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, throw on a first coat on this side of my um, desk, and then I will uh, let that dry and do my second coat. Then we'll get to the decorating. So I'm going to be doing, so I have a plan for this desk, I really do. But I'm also leaving part of the plan a little open to um, just depending on what I think is gonna work. What, what my idea is is to, um, I wanna use some floral transfers to kind of cover up part of this overlapping part here and maybe a little bit on the sides and definitely just a peek on this writing part that pulls out. I wanna do a little peek of floral. But I think, um, I think I wanna add, I mean, I gotta add some gold somewhere, I mean got to how can I not so I'm thinking what I'm gonna do for gold is um, I have these these um, gold transfers gold foil transfers that are like scroll work so they come in like strips and you can put them along you know edges or details and make them look kind of like inlaid gold I'm, I'm thinking I want to use that somewhere but um, maybe along here and then um, along some of the, the, the bottom. I'm, I'm not real sure, that's, that's the part that uh, I'm, un, I'm undecided on. Like I, I know I wanna use them, I'm just not sure exactly where. And it all kind of depends on how this looks when I am finished with this coral color and I pull up my tape and then I'll kind of lay them out to the side. So I, I don't ever start a project without a plan, but that doesn't mean that sometimes the plan doesn't change a little bit or adjust or, um, you know, you kind of kind of have to be open to adjusting your plan a little bit because things don't always go right or, you know, sometimes things start to look a little different than you thought they would, so. 
like I said earlier, I'm going to distress this piece, but I'm going to wait until it's all ready to be waxed because I want my transfers to match, you know, the distressing to match the rest of the piece. So, um, so I'm going to do that right before I wax, which, which I have to do to seal the transfer. So this is Dixie Belle. It doesn't necessarily require sealing or wax, but if I'm going to be waxing the transfers, I might as well just wax the whole piece. <clears throat> and I'm a huge fan of how wax feels. I love the the velvety um, the, the velvety touch that it that it has. I really like it. So so I'm partial to waxing. Yes, I am. Notice that I am not. Um, none of my brush strokes are going towards the tape. You don't want to stroke towards the tape because that'll increase your chance of the paint seeping underneath. So make sure that when you're brushing, um, your brush strokes go away from the tape. So that's my first coat. Um, it's already starting to look pretty funky and colorful, although I would never dream of leaving it just like this. It, it's looking kind of cool already. I'll let you see. Let's get with the stripes on the side and that fun. Yeah, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So um, I'm gonna let that dry and then and then do the second coat and then we will move on to the. Um, the transfers and the and the the goodies. So, Woo. all right, awesome. All right, my coral is dry and it's looking real pretty. Um, so now I want to add some touches of gold, of course, and then some transfers. Um, I'm going to do some gold oil transfers and I'm also going to do some floral transfers um, along with that but first um, I want to give my legs a gold dipped look and um, the way I'm going to achieve that is um, I use this um, it's called by design master it's 24 karat pure gold is the color and it's a um, plating spray so um, I'm not a fan of really any other metallic sprays. I haven't found any that I like that are um, as brilliant as this one. Uh, it comes in silver and rose gold and I think like three or four different shades of just regular gold. Um, but 24 karat gold is my go-to. So you're gonna see how I gold dip legs. And um, basically I spray from kind of far away because I want it to look like it's fading up if I wanted like a hard line, I would tape around, um, um, tape around my leg and just spray, you know, whichever part of my leg I wanted to be gold. But I, I want to do kind of a faded look, like it was dipped. So this is my go-to. And then after that's dry, I'm going to do it now so it can dry. And after that's dry, then I'm going to seal the legs in a clear polycrylic. So. I'm just gonna hold it back kind of far. Um, I just wanna bring it up to about there. So, can you see that? I don't wanna bring it up really high. You can bring it up as high as you want, but. So basically, just in order to get that fading up look, you just kinda have to stay far away from, um, from the piece. You don't wanna spray too close.
Okay, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you can see those legs because they look really cool. See how they're just gold dipped. Just a little kiss of gold, nothing too crazy. And then now I'm gonna do some um, gold gilded scroll work. Um, it's called, I think it's called Gilded Inlay Scrolls. And these are from Redesign with Prima. They are um, transfers that are gold uh, scrolls. So they come in these strips like this. And you just cut the, script, um, the strips apart, however much you need, and you apply them. So, um, a little bit less effort than the adhesive transfers, which just lay down the glue and you put gold leaf or mica powder or rub-on foil on it. So, um, I like those too, but these are just a little bit, just one less step. So I went ahead and I cut apart the ones that I'm going to use. I'm going to be using the, um, they're like gold buttons almost. So I think I'm going to do them, I'm going to do some right along this line. And like I said earlier, I'm going to be doing florals to kind of cover up some of this line. So these will just peek out just a little bit. Um, I'm going to carry it down here. And then I think I might even do some on these little um, pillars here. I think. So let's see what it looks like on the top first. And then, um, then I'll decide about the, um, <coughs> about the pillars. So I got my little stick. The transfers come with this little stick. And basically, it's the graphic and they come on a back backing paper. And all you have to do is peel off your little backing paper. Actually. Before I do that, I'm gonna um, fit. I'm gonna fit it to to my top and cut off just what I need. So I need that much there, and then that leaves me this much for here, which is pretty close to perfect leave that right there okay so now I'm gonna peel off my backing paper and place it gently where I want it on my um, on my top and hopefully that I get it in the right position it's kind of hard to see you can't really see through um, you can't really see through these like you can the, tr the regular transfer so we're gonna hope this is pretty center. So I'm, I've stuck it, and now I'm just going to burnish it with my stick to make sure that it stays. So once I have that all rubbed down, or where I think it's all rubbed down, I'm gonna try to pull it off slowly and make sure that my transfer's stuck. Okay. Cool. 
Can you see that? Isn't that so fun for how easy it is um, to just add some character to your pieces? It's just like, it's just so, it's so easy and it adds so much, you know? So I'm a huge fan of these. I wish I could get them in all different patterns and shapes and sizes. There's a few other ones, but um, these ones are really cool too. These, um, the, the scrolls. I like how they come, you cut them in strips. I think it's so cool. So now we're gonna do this portion down here. trickier going in the curves but it's definitely doable okay so slowly to make sure it transferred correctly and boom so neat so neat let's see if you can get any closer and see it isn't that cool so fun. Look at that little bit of bling with the legs. That's just so fun. So I, like I said, I think I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to add some to these pillars here too. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start um, laying down my floral transfer just so you can see that part. And then I'll do the rest of the gold and the rest of the florals in my, um, time-lapse version so so you can kind of speed through that so for the florals ah, for the florals I'm going to be using my one of my favorite transfers <clears throat> it is a spring 2019 release um, transfer Ruby Rose and I love this transfer because I love there's so many different colors in it that go so well with with just every color basically so you can see some of the um, some of the blues it kind of matched this this stencil color that I did and there's the rosy um, here you can see it better on the back the rosy red and coral there that I that I used on this side so I think it's gonna go really well um, and look good so now I just have to figure out exactly which parts I want to use um, and I think so I'm gonna do some on the top, a little bit on the sides, and then I want to do some, remember this um, desk that comes out I was telling you about, um, that's it pulled out. So I'm going to put a little bit on there just for fun since we're missing this front part. Um, why not jazz up a little peek here that you can kind of see. here because it's got that that corally color but then I'm gonna add in I need to add in some with blue too I'm gonna cut out the one with the coral and then I'm probably gonna grab um, a few you know maybe this one here um, to add to it so I'm I'm using this transfer I'm cutting apart the pieces and using it just kind of wherever I please which is the good thing about this one in particular is that it's it's kind of meant to do that. You see how they're all really kind of separate elements. Um, it's kind of meant, I believe, to cut apart and do as you wish with it. So that's what I'm gonna do. My other favorite is Rose and Rouge. It's, it's similar to this, how it um, comes in little pieces and you cut them apart and um, 
I love I love customizing my transfers and making them however I want. Um, you know, because each piece I think calls for different. You know, each piece has its own personality, so I really like to play up on that. I'm thinking this one will angle up like that. this one up like like that and then I uh, maybe more like that and then I can add some maybe we'll do like that and then I can add some more florals coming up that way I think that's a good idea so I'm gonna go ahead and lay this one down yeah like that so when you peel your backing paper away, just be gentle because sometimes in the right um, weather circumstances, the graphic will stick to the backing paper and you don't want that. If that happens, stick it in the freezer for just a couple of minutes. Okay, so I like that. So I got it where I want it, so now I'm gonna press it down. Do not press it down until you have it where you want it. It's a word of advice me to you. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go, go ahead and start rubbing my graphic on. Actually start somewhere near the middle and work my way out. I let my paint dry to the touch before I put any transfers on. I believe that the um, instructions say a week or something like that but I'm gonna unofficially tell you that you can just wait till the paint is dry so see how um, remember how my desk has this lip that comes up I'm gonna um, take a sharp knife sharp is the key word there and I'm gonna just cut a crease or I'm gonna cut that graphic gently so I don't cut my paint gently where the um, graphic falls that way it doesn't that way it will bend or it won't bend I'm sorry with with the door but rather it, it'll be separated so I don't have to worry about it coming up right there I think I can probably start to remove this And peel it back really slow in case you missed some spots and you want to just um, put your backing paper back, back down and get those a little bit better. Okay, cool. And then once I get my graphic on, I like to go around the edges with my finger and just make sure those edges are really really down down so you want to do it firmly but gently because if you do it too hard you, I, I'm afraid you can rip up some of the the pattern okay so on to my other half my backing paper I like to roll it at a hard angle I think it helps to um, not lift the graphic and rip it but I 
want to go slow. So I got a little bit of my floral transfer on there. I'm gonna do some more. Like I said, I wanna, I wanna incorporate some of the blue <clears throat> into the flowers. So I'm gonna use some of the blue flowers, but I think it's looking pretty neat. I wish that the colors were as bright on camera as they are in real life, but, um, but they're not. So let's see, I think I would like to add this blue flower here. branch off maybe just like that that way you can still see peaks of gold through there see what I'm talking about yeah we're gonna have it just branching off of there okay so I'm peeling off my backing paper gently Careful where you're gonna lay it. Make sure it's where you want. Cut my little 
um, where, where it's hinged like I did before, gently. And I just love all of these colors. I love all of these colors so much. I love them together. I love them on their own. Oh my gosh, I love color. Okay, so I think that I'm going to add a little bit more. Um, a little bit more flowers maybe like here or here so, well I don't know. I'm gonna have to look at it for a minute and decide but I definitely want to put some here a little bit on the sides finish my gold dots there and um, then I need to seal my transfer so I'm just gonna go ahead and clear wax the whole thing and um, clear, or I'm sorry, um, clear gloss polyacrylic on my legs. And then for the seat, um, I'll show you the seat. <clears throat> so the seat that I'm using has this um, really beautiful wood grain and I really don't want to paint it. I might put a little bit of floral transfer over um, or maybe, maybe on the back. <clears throat> maybe like a little bit right here to coordinate it with the desk. And then I'm gonna recover the seat. So I think that is all I have left to do. And then I'm gonna be done with my piece. So if you have any questions, you can message me at CC Restyled, my Facebook page. Um, other than that, thank you for watching.